All right, guys, we are here for another Tuesday, our Tuesday live stream. Uh, we do these at 5 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Uh, that means some of you on the West Coast are about 2 o'clock um, your time. I know that's the middle of the afternoon. Um, I just wanted to address that, that we do these at 5 o'clock Eastern Standard Time each Tuesday. Um, I've been getting a few emails and comments saying it would be helpful to list the time zone. And I, I do try to do that as much as I can, but between posting to uh, Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and the social medias, um, I might miss one here or there. Um, but it is five o'clock Eastern Standard Time, uh, and that is in the United States. So we are here, we'll give people uh, a few minutes to show up. Um, we'll go over what we did uh, last week, and uh, we'll we'll cast some some fun stuff tonight. While we're waiting for some people to show up, um, if you're watching the replay or even if you're watching now, uh, do me a favor and head over to TLF Works. The link is in the description. Um, Todd is a good friend of mine. He is the person who helps moderate the chat and helps with the uh, StreamYard banners and uh, pop-up um, graphics and all that. So do me a favor right now. If you're not subscribed to his channel, hit the link in the description. Subscribe to his channel. That would help both of us out. That would, you know, I would appreciate that. He would appreciate that. So make sure you do that. Um, and then come on back over so we can uh, cast some fun, uh, fun blanks tonight. How has everybody's Tuesday been so far? Um, I can tell you mine has been, been pretty decent. Um, I haven't been on my bike in a few days, so that's been kind of strange. I uh, can't wait to get back on the bike, but uh, this morning I painted a, I, I painted one of the rooms in our house. Um, we're getting ready. We're getting the nursery ready. So, um, our little girl is due in October, uh, towards the end of October. So I spent the morning painting the nursery with my wife and, uh, that was, that was fun. Hopefully, uh, as long as everything goes well, I will be doing a second coat tonight and hopefully that's all it'll need. But if it needs a third coat, then, you know, so be it. Um, but we've got a, we've got a yellowish color picked out that is pretty solid. Um, it almost, now this was unintentional, but um, it, it almost reminds me of a Powermatic yellow. So, you know, maybe that's a, maybe that's a sign that I need some more, not need some more, need my first Powermatic uh, tool. I've been looking at their lathe um, it's expensive, but, uh, you know, one day, one day. All right. Um, oh, there are, there are, uh, chats here. Uh, I was in the private chat. I didn't realize that, uh, I was in, I didn't realize that. So that's cool. Uh, Jim, Jim's here. Todd's here. Awesome. Jim standard. So that means you spent the day in front of a uh, computer screen. Understood. Hopefully it was, uh, hopefully it was a good Tuesday. Uh, Todd, I get to pick up a new toy later. That should be lots of fun. Are you getting that one tonight? I know we talked about it a little bit uh, before we went live. I don't know if you want to expand on that. Uh, Powermatic, the gold standard. Yep. So, you know, maybe, maybe one day, uh, maybe, maybe one day we'll get there, but, uh, you know, we'll see. All right. So while we give people a minute to show up, I'm going to do just a bit of prep work. Uh, I've got some cups ready to go for our casting demo. Just 
should get some gloves out because safety first. All right. Carl over at Bear Creek Woodworking is here. How's it going? What's up, Carl? What's new? That uh, that workbench you've been working on is a is a behemoth of a uh, workbench. I'm a little. I think you're. I think that workbench that you've been working on has uh, um, has been uh, is as big as my entire shop. All right, guys, so in case you didn't catch it at the very beginning, do me a favor. Todd from TLF Works, he, uh, he's helping moderate uh, the chat and to show the comments on the screen. If you, haven't, uh, if you haven't subscribed to him, make sure you go over and do that. There's a link in the description down below. Um, so go do that and then come right back so you can watch us cast some blanks. Uh, thanks. It's been fun building it. That, that's good. Um, you know, if I manage to get, uh, you know, an, an outside, shouldn't say outside, but a, a detached shop, uh, at some point, that's going to be one of the first things I do is build an outfeed assembly table. Cause I need one desperately in my, uh, in my current shop, but because of the configuration and, um, just the location it's kind of hard to justify it right now but hopefully down down the line all right so uh i do want to mention that i am on patreon um i want to thank my top tier patrons mark and angie um but any support at any level is greatly appreciated um you know, the, the link is in the description as well. If you want to check that out, um, it was brought up in the past that there was no super chat for these live streams. That is because I'm not quite able to monetize yet because I don't have the watch time, which is fine. Um, but if you are interested in a one-time donation and not a monthly Patreon pledge, um, there is a donate button on my website, um, that goes through PayPal so cross dash cut dash creations is my website. Um, if that interests you, uh, you can also find all kinds of, uh, merchandise, uh, logo merchandise and hand turned, uh, projects on there, uh, YouTube videos, all kinds of fun stuff. So, um, so if that's something you're interested in, you can check out the website there. Um, I also have Amazon affiliate links. That's a free way to, um, to help support my shop. Um, if you use any of the affiliate links, click the link and then whatever you purchase using that link, uh, I get a small percentage of. So even if you're just doing like, you know, regular shopping that you would have, you know, things that you would have normally bought on Amazon anyway, if you use one of my links, either in the description of this video again, or on my website. Um, if you use any of those, that helps the shop out as well. So just a, uh, and, and it costs nothing extra. All right, so let's go ahead and look at last week's project. So last week we turned our very first Levesh. It was a fountain pen and it was a blank by Benny Ray Watkins Jr. I won this one in an auction. Um, so this is what it looks like. There's the cap. Here's the body. If I unscrew this now, I didn't put in the ink yet. Um, there's, there's what it looks like. There's what the body looks like. Um, I, I couldn't be happier with how this this pen uh, turned out. I'm super excited about it. Um, so yeah, I didn't put the 
ink in it yet. There are two options. There's an ink uh, that you can just um, insert into the body, and then that will um, eject ink as, as you write. But then there's also a refillable cartridge. Um, I prefer the refillable cartridges. Just I don't know why. It's, it's just what I do. But I haven't put the ink in because, you know, if there's interest in this pen, um, I'll wait to ship it. Uh, if somebody buys it and, uh, then that way the ink won't dry up, um, because it's not in here. So, so that's that. Let's go ahead and flip around the camera angle. Let's see. Camera. Let's go ahead and flip this around and adjust to our casting station. There we are. So now we are going to cast some chaos blanks tonight. So these are going to be similar to worthless wood blanks. One of the things that I managed to purchase was a box of cutoffs from uh, RJB Wood Turner's Chaos Blank casting uh, uh, his cutoffs. So some of these aren't necessarily big enough for full pens. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna look through these. I'm gonna have my P-Town Subby block mold. This is the uh, five and a quarter by five and a quarter by one and a half block mold. Again, that is a P-Town Subby mold. It's an HDPE mold. Um, I'm going to just kind of randomly place pieces in here. So here's a good one. Um, if I think some of these pieces might be big enough to get maybe a Sierra or something similar out of, um, I might hold off on those. Um, there's, there's one. Uh, all right. And I'm not, I'm semi randomly placing these just so we get decent, uh, a, a decent chaos effect. I've done worthless wood blanks before, and they, they do turn out pretty cool. Now, unfortunately, unfortunately, I don't have an example of a completed pen here, but I do have some worthless wood pen blanks that I cast, um, and they end up looking pretty cool. I'll go ahead and I'll flip you around just to show these off because I've found that the um, I found that the uh, the other camera or the, the front facing camera shows a little better. Okay, so these these are what the worthless wood blanks end up looking like. So we have one that looks like this. We cast it in resin and then it ends up being, uh, you get the effect of the wood and resin like this when, uh, when, I, when I cut them up uh, on the table saw. So that's what these will roughly end up looking like. So those are just some examples. Now, before we get too much further, we need to pick some colors. So what colors do you want to see cast tonight? I do have Caster's Choice uh, colors, and I also have, um, I also have uh, Divine Pigments. Bob! 
Bob himself from RJB Wood Turner is here. What's going on, Bob? I'm cast. I'm uh, doing a chaos casting tonight. So we've got some. Uh, we've got some of your cutoffs in the mold, and we're gonna cast those tonight. Uh, Bob says this should be a great upcycle. It's cool to see uh, you upcycling what's already been upcycled. So we're gonna upcycle the upcycle. Two ups make a down. I I don't know. Um. So yeah, blue. Okay. Blue, bright green, just hanging out. That sounds like a fantastic time. So there's RJB Wood Turner's uh, sticker. Truth is, if you're here, you're probably subscribed to him. But if you're not subscribed to Bob, go subscribe to his channel. All right. Let's go ahead and put these blanks off to the side. So I heard blue. Let's do a uh, let's do a darkish blue. Let's do like a cobalt blue. Um, I have I love lime green. So there's a bright green. Well, do we want to do do we want to do lime green or do we want to do key lime? Actually, let's do let's stick with. Uh, Let's stick with lime green. We'll do caster's choice tonight. Um, silver, okay. Uh, I just have to find it. I know I have it. Uh, vibrant print, cherry, spruce green, violet, bronze, antique, gold. Uh, let's do platinum silver. Platinum silver, antique silver. Just regular silver. Let's do platinum silver. Let's go ahead and do those three colors tonight. And uh, it'll be... Let's go with that. All right. We're going to put our gloves on. And I don't spray mold release when I use HDPE uh, molds just because they they're kind of... Non-stick might be the wrong term for it, but in a sense, they are non-stick um, already. I just unscrew the screws. I knock off the one side with a mallet, and then I, uh, I'm able to get the blank out uh, pretty, pretty easily. All right. Let's see. Let's see if we have any other... pieces that might be workable here. Alright. I think that will do just nicely. Alright. We are using Aluma Light Clear Slow tonight, so that means we are casting a resin that is that has a one-to-one -one ratio, meaning if we pour 90, we're going to pour 90 grams of V. Um, you know, if we pour 50 grams of A, we'll pour 50 grams of B. So I'm going to start, I'll probably pour 90 grams of each, uh, each color just to... Uh, just to get us started, I'm going to adjust the camera just a smidge, just a little bit, so we can kind of see uh, where we're at. I don't know if the grams will show up too well. Right now it's reading zero, which is what we want. So I'm going to pour 90 grams of A into here. We want to make sure that with each new color, with each new cup, we want our scale to read zero. We want to get an accurate reading. 
because alumalite with the bigger pores you can be off a little bit but with the smaller pores you have a lot less room for air but because we have a, a larger pour tonight we'll be okay when you pour alumalite clear slow if you're over on a or b you always want to be over on b because that's the hardener if you don't have enough hardener um then you run the risk of the resin not setting up. So there's 90 grams of A in the first cup. We're at zero, so we'll go to 90 grams in the second cup. And if the resin doesn't set up and it stays soft, then you've lost that casting. So that's, that's the bummer side. That's why you wanna make sure that you have enough uh, B or be as close to one to one in terms of ratio as possible. These pumps allow me to really control how much uh, resin is getting dispensed. And that's why I really like them. It takes a, it takes an extra minute to get up to the uh, amount that you want to pour that I want to pour, but for the, uh, for the ability to control how much is dispensed, um, that peace of mind is, is worth it in my opinion. Seventy-three. We're shooting for ninety. Eighty seven. Eighty nine. Ninety. I think we're good. Now that we have our A side poured into our three cups, we're gonna add the color. So I'm gonna grab three popsicle sticks for three colors. Tonight we've got Caster's Choice colors. We've got cobalt blue, we've got lime green, and we've got platinum silver. So before I add my B side, I'm just gonna add my mica. I usually do three, three scoops. I also, uh, I like it. I like my blanks to be, to have more of a solid color. I don't always like them to be translucent. So I use more mica. The more mica powder or coloring you use, the more solid they are. There is a popsicle stick test that I learned from Brian Blum. He said, with Caster's Choice, if you, if you add your mica, um, if you add your mica and you do the popsicle stick test, I'm gonna need to get more lime green. Um, the way to check is if you watch the resin run down the popsicle stick, if you can't see the grain of the popsicle stick, then you're going to have uh, a, a more solid blank. If you can see the grain of the wood through the resin or through the color, then you'll have a more translucent blank. And tr there's nothing wrong with translucent blanks. It's just not what I prefer to turn most of the time. Um, so just know that if you are going to, um, you know, if, if you're trying to achieve the effect of translucency, I don't know if I just made up a word there, but if you are trying to get a more translucent blank, then just use less mica powders or less color. Um, if you want a more solid blank, then use more mica. And, you know, you might not get the effect you want the first time. So, you know, experiment with what your, um, you know, do some experiments, see what you like, see what you don't like. There have been times where I've cast perfectly good blanks, but the effect that I was going for didn't happen. So, um, so it's not a bad blank, it's just not what I was hoping for. Okay. Uh, Bob, RJB Wood Turner says, it's been a long time since I've cast anything, so I'm going to school tonight. I'm, I'm flattered. Uh, I'm flattered that I'm, that I'm tonight's teacher. Um, okay. Um, Todd says, should we do the popsicle test after adding the B side? Um, 
yes, because that that will tell you um, whether your blank is going to be more translucent or more solid, because then that way you know that's how much resin you have. So even though that means you're using an extra popsicle stick to add more mica if that's what you want, um, you know, you, you're all, you're only losing a popsicle stick. You're, you're using an extra popsicle stick, which is, you know, it, it doesn't really cost a whole lot of anything. So that's why I would suggest the popsicle stick after you add your side B, because that'll give you a more true idea of what um, of what um, of what it'll look like. Uh, Bob, you got it. We'll uh, we'll talk. So now that I have my A side, um, now that I have my A side poured, I have my micas mixed in. I'm going to go back to my scale and I'm going to turn it back on. Now we added our A, so there should be 90 grams in there, but we also added the popsicle stick. So that also adds weight. We want to make sure that we, there's a, there's a button here. That's the on button. It also says tear T A R E. You want to make sure that says zero because we want to add 90 grams of B as well. So in order to add exactly 90 grams of B, we want this to go from zero to 90. So now that this is zero, I can start adding my B side. Hopefully, there we go. Sometimes the pumps on the B side, because of the way the B is formulated, because it's the hardener, sometimes it crusts up and gets real, like, it just gets weird in the, uh, in the pumps, so you kind of have to clean them out with acetone or some other um, some other solvent. Um, so yeah, we're at 88 on the blue and 90. All right, so now now we are using clear slow tonight. This is a Luma Light clear slow. I'm making sure I'm at zero, so we're good there. So I can start adding my part B. We're using a Lumalite Clear Slow, so that has a 12-minute working time, or at least that's what it's advertised. Now, if you are in a shop that is in a hot environment, you might not have 12 minutes because your resin at room temperature might be pretty warm. If you're in a colder climate, you might have a little more than 12 minutes because your resin's room, te uh, room temperature is a little colder. So it's just something to keep in mind. Now, right now, I'm in my basement. And sorry, guys, I'm trying to make sure I don't go over. All right, there's 90. 91. 91's okay. Right now, I'm in my basement, so uh, my thermometer says I'm at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm at 57% humidity. Now, with this one, zero. So we're good to start going in at 90 again, going up to 90 again. Now, for color casting, it's okay to be at 57%. But if you're doing any sort of clear casting, so whether you're doing label casting or watch parts blanks or anything that's a clear cast, for my taste, I don't do a whole lot of that, but... If I go to do a clear cast, I'm going to run a dehumidifier so I can get that 57% humidity down to closer to, you know, maybe 30 or even let, uh, even lower if possible. But once, once you, but we'll be okay tonight for, uh, for the color casting. Now, once you add your B side, the clock starts ticking because the reaction has started between A and B. So you want to stir. You just want to keep stirring. So I really haven't stirred any of these yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give these three an initial stir just to kind of make sure it gets mixed up. Now what this is going to do is it's going to mix the A and B, but it's also going to continue to mix any of the mica powder, any of the coloring that uh, didn't get mixed in when we added it to the A. 
it's not a big deal that it didn't get in the didn't get mixed in the first time, but this gives it a chance to really um, to really give ourselves a good color. Also, when I'm stirring, I make sure that I frequently scrape the sides of the cups just to make sure that the resin doesn't stick to the side and it it every every bit of it gets properly mixed um, the other thing that's important to note is that i am using paper cups that are that do not have uh wax on them if you have paper cups that uh have wax on them because the resin heats up because of the re uh, the exothermic reaction the wax ends up melting and it can get into your um, into the resin so that would be that would cause the resin to uh, give off an effect that is not desirable or it could ruin the batch um, now with a luma light clear slow and a luma light clear um, i like to uh, pour with color separation so color separation is going to happen for a luma light clear slow around 95 to 100 degrees and I start using my temperature gun when I start to feel the resin heat up. When it starts to, when I start to feel it heat up in my hand or when it starts to get a little thick while I'm stirring, that's when I start to use the temperature gun. Now, before I get too far, we will do the popsicle stick test to see if we have enough coverage on here. I'm just going to give these a stir. And another thing to note with color separation is however many colors you have, as long as all of them except one are at that 95 degree mark, you'll be good to pour. So because we have three colors tonight, as long as two of, as long as two of them are at 95 or above, I can pour because they're not going to be affected by the third one that might or might not be at that 95 degree uh, temperature as well. Sometimes I stir clockwise, sometimes I stir counterclockwise. It's all just a matter of making sure that everything is thoroughly mixed. Now I know that I poured more than my uh, more than my block mold will hold because I added material to the uh, to the block so what I like to do is I like to get a few either uh, pen blank molds or ring blank molds and I get them ready so um, so I can get a few extra blanks out of them so now if we look here, if we do our popsicle stick test, we can see here, it might be hard to see on the camera, but if I do the popsicle stick test, as it drips down, I've got pretty good coverage. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that, with the blue. I'll do the same with the green. I'll let it just kind of fall down. Okay. And now the silver. And I know that I didn't get exact amounts, uh, exact equal amounts of mica in each of these three. Uh, I was just eyeballing it. There's nothing wrong with that. So some of these colors might be a little more translucent than others, or they might be a little more solid. Um, but it, that's okay. Um, most casters will tell you that they recommend painting the inside, uh, painting the tubes or painting the insides of the blanks um, of resin blanks anyway, just to hide, just to hide the fact that, you know, there's some translucency. My personal opinion is I like to get the powder coated tubes just because then I don't have to worry about painting because honestly, I'm not that good of a painter. Uh, sometimes it's a little splotchy sometimes I get some drips or some runs so getting the powder coated tubes even though it costs you know 
a buck or two extra. In my opinion, it's worth it because then that way it's all uniform and you do have a few options there. All right, so I'm going to do a temperature check with this resin. When I do a temperature check, I want to make sure that I'm stirring and I check after I stir and I check by pulling out the popsicle stick and I check the popsicle stick. And right now this says we're at 97, so we're actually ready to go on this one. So I'm going to make sure I'm going to stir this green. Ninety six, ninety five. So now this third one, it doesn't matter because we've hit that ninety five degree mark on the blue and the green. So here's how I'm going to do this. I'm going to take this old Powerade cup and I'm just going to pour these in a little bit at a time. So there's some blue, there's some green, there's some silver blue, green, silver, and there's no right or wrong way to pour this. You know, if, if you're going after a certain effect, try different things. You can try, you know, mixing the amount of mica, you can try different types of pours, you know, do what do what you're interested in. Now I'm going to go ahead and scrape the rest of what's in here. Okay, so there's the blue. There's the green. I've got my silicone mat, so if I spill a little bit, it'll be easy to clean up. And once you get to that 95 degree mark, I like clear slow, Aluma light clear slow, because it gives me a little more time, but you do have to move and make sure that you get it in the pot relatively quick. All right. If you want, you can stir a little bit in there. You know, just give it, give it a little bit of extra, you know, whatever. I don't stir too much because then you, you still do run the risk of blending colors a little bit and if you're after that effect that's fine um, but just know that you know what you're after so now I'm just going to pour this resin into the block mold now my my pressure pot my uh, compressor is going to get loud so I'm going to let that run while we're filling up the um, now these are now these might try to float a little bit okay so now I'm gonna fill these guys got a pen blank here got blank ish here okay now I'm going to use the Harbor Freight pot tonight just because we don't have a super large pour uh, let's get this guy in here first and then we poured one two and three so now this guy will get in the pressure pot and i will check comments after this fills up after the air fills up and then uh we'll have a conversation about what's going on in the chat I, uh, this pressure pot is rated for 60 pounds with a Lumalite. I usually don't go above 50. That's plenty. So, um, so I'll just hook up the air hose. I'll get to 50 and then we'll go from there.
I did take off my gloves because we were done with the resin. One thing that I did want to mention is with the Harbor Freight pot, which is right there. Um, when you go to tighten those bolts, when you go to tighten, make sure you do opposites together. Never do, if you're, if you're going to tighten this, make sure you're at opposite. So you're either doing these two together or these two together. If you are right next to each other, um, that could result in deformation of the, um, of the rim and the lid, which could cause sealing issues um, with how it seals. So, um, which could cause leaks and then which could cause uh, a bad cast over time. So just make sure you uh, go opposites. All right, so I'm going to flip the camera one more time. I'll check out the chat and see what's going on. Let's check out the chat. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, I'm just going to pick up where I left off. Uh, Carl, Bear Creek Woodworking, says I've used epoxy in the canoe building, but I've never cast anything for turning. It's good to learn. Yeah, and the one thing with this, um, there is a... Now, I don't know all the technical aspects of it, but there is some difference between resin and epoxy that I'm not entirely sure of. Uh, I know there are some companies that are epoxies, some companies are urethane resins, just make sure you follow the guidelines of what the resin or epoxy that you're using is suggested for because, um, you know, using epoxy in canoe building, that might be a great epoxy for the canoe as a sealant or, you know, in that product or in that project, but it might not be good for pen blanks. So just make sure you use, um, just make sure you read the labels to, to, fig to see what, um, what projects are good for which resins or epoxies. Um, Lisa says, I would also like to purchase one of the blanks. Let me know the cost. Um, I, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll send you an email. We'll get together. Um, I also turned one of Bob's um, chaos blanks and put it on a tiny giant. Um, I have that video that I need to edit. And as soon as I edit that video, I promise it will be my thousand subscriber giveaway um, pen because Bob was so instrumental in helping me get to that thousand uh, subscriber mark. Um, actually, I think I have that pen down here. Let me check real quick. Yeah, I do. So here's what here's what this pen looks like. This is one of the chaos blanks on an antique brass. Now the light's going to choose to betray me. But this is what it looks like. So as soon as I can, as soon as I can get that video edited, this will be the thousand subscriber giveaway pen. Um, it's a tiny giant. It came from Chad over at Turner's Warehouse. Uh, and the blank was one of Bob's uh, chaos blanks. Okay. Uh, Lisa says, I'm not set up for casting, so this is fascinating. Yeah, I've only been doing this probably a couple years now. And to go to these pen, turner, uh, pen turner, turners gatherings, um, you know, even though I've been there, you know, once or twice as, as a spectator, uh, I've been, I've been to an event as a vendor, uh, for blanks cause I do sell my blanks. Um, even as a vendor, you're fascinated because you, there's always so much to learn cause everybody is so helpful there. Um, uh, okay. 
uh, Jim says with casting, you're only limited by your imagination. That's exactly it. Um, you know, I know there are a lot of guys who use a lot of different techniques. Um, and that's exactly it. The imagination is the only limiting factor. So if you try something and don't like it, try something else. Um, uh, did you get all those molds into the pressure pot? Yeah, I have a, a rack from P-Town Subby. Um, I have these, this is the smaller um, pressure pot. So I have the smaller, um, I have the smaller one for that. Um, but I also have a larger one for, um, for my five gallon pressure pot. Um, and they, they do look generally the same. So I'll show you the five gallon one. This is what the five gallon one looks like. Um, there are detents here and here, here and here. Those are for removable shelves. I like to keep mine set up like this. Um, just because I can put a bespoke uh, vertical mold in there, um, no problem. And I can also fit other, a lot of other blanks in this five gallon, um, on this five gallon rack. But the two and a half gallon rack is set up the same exact way um, where I have the middle kind of taken out. So if I have a taller mold, uh, I have space for it. And then I can put some uh, of the extra molds in here. So, um, so yeah, I did get all of the ones that I filled um, in the pressure pot. So those will sit because I'm using Alumalite clear slow. Um, those will sit in the pot for about four hours. Um, so it's, it's about quarter to six now. So, uh, we've been talking for a little bit, so I'll probably pull those, uh, out of the pot around, you know, nine thirty or 10 o'clock, um, and go from there. Um, uh, Lisa, thank you. That was, that was a fun turn. That was, that is a pretty sweet pen. I'm, I'm almost upset. And I think, I mean, I think my wife is a little more upset than I am that I'm doing a giveaway for that pen. Um, cause she was, um, <laughs> she was, she, she was pretty fond of it, but, but you know, that's, a, that's okay. Um, thanks Bob. I, I appreciate that. Um, you know, that, that CA finish on there, uh, it, it really did well with that. Uh, it is a good kit as well. Um, it's a nice, simple kit. The first time I saw that kit, I was amazed at how small it, uh, how small it was. Um, Mike DeLalter from Lost River Pens, uh, Lost River Pen Company, he showed us one and I, w I was just like amazed at how small that, that it, you know, the, the size of that. I'm like, that makes a great carry pen. Um, thanks, Carl. It is, it, it is a solid pen. Um, <laughs> Bob, do we know if it's a boy or a girl? Um, we do know. Um, and I will, I'll, I'll give you guys a hint. Think of the stereotypical colors. We are having a girl. Uh, she is due... October 21st. So, uh, so, so we'll see. Um, the official due date is October 21st. Both my wife and I were late babies. This is our first. So hopefully we're close in that range. Um, <laughs> I did, a, I did, uh, I was talking at the beginning of, of tonight's live stream. Um, I spent the morning painting, uh, painting the nursery and it's, uh, um, it's not, you know, we went, we went to the big box store and we picked out our colors. We knew we wanted to go with a yellow and I put it on the, uh, I, I put it on our walls and hopefully tonight, if it's not too late, hopefully I can get a second coat on there tonight. Um, but the, um, after I got done with it, I'm like, you know, this is, it might not be exactly quite the right color match, but it very much reminded me of a Powermatic yellow. Um, I don't have anything Powermatic yet, but hopefully one day down the road, that'll, um, 
that'll happen because I've been I've been eyeing one of their big massive lathes, but with a big massive powermatic lathe also comes a big massive price tag. So, you know, the Rycon that I'm running right now uh, has done everything I needed to. I'm more than happy with it. I just it's just one it's just the dream lathe that you know that's the that's the one day forever lathe that will be hopefully down the line okay um uh bob says what was that kit called again um the kit that i put your chaos blank on bob that was a tiny giant i think that was i think sometimes it's also called an editor um but if they go by those two names um, I got that kit from Turner's Warehouse. Um, Turner's Warehouse is linked in the description for uh, for uh, Caster's Choice and Divine Pigments. Uh, they're not linked for any kits, but it takes you to the website and you can search for it there. It's, it's called a Tiny Giant. Um, and it's super simple. It goes together um, almost like a Zen. All you have to do is push in the back end push in the front end and you're done. Like it's a super simple, uh, it's a super simple uh, assembly. Unlike the Levesh that has 900 parts and the Levesh isn't even complicated. It's just got a lot of parts that as long as you're organized, it's not bad. It just takes a little more time. Um, Carl, Lisa, Bob, thank you. That's, uh, it, it, we are super excited. Um, Carl's birthday is in October, so maybe she would be born be born on my birthday. Carl, what is your what what day were you born in October? Because we're due the twenty first, but um, we know due dates are uh, they they're they're good estimates, but uh, they they aren't always exact, which is fine. Um, Todd, tiny giant, uh, <laughs> Carl, bigger is better. Yeah. Uh, bigger lathe means bigger shop. Yeah. Uh, we, we were talking with an architect and we did get a quote. Um, our initial, our initial estimate and the actual quote, unfortunately were two very different numbers. So at this point we're trying to figure out what to do, but hopefully one day, I will have a dedicated garage shop, so then uh, we can take the fumes and the uh, um, you know, the fumes, the smells, the the noise out of the house. Um, but trust me, I'm 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 trying. I'm trying. Uh, Carl was born the 24th. Yeah, that could be. You know, we'll, we'll cross our fingers. I don't know. I don't know how uh, how my wife feels about. Um, I mean, the truth is it's three days, so it's not the end of the world. But, uh, you know, that would be that would be pretty cool. That would be pretty awesome. So, uh, so yeah. So, what questions do you guys have for me? What do you guys want to talk about? Are there any topics that you want me to cover? Um, you know, what, what, what do you want me to, you know, what, what sounds good? Um, Carl asks how big of a shop I'm looking at. Well, based on the size of our property uh, and the size of my current shop, we were looking at an oversized two-car garage, so we were looking at something along the lines of uh, 28 wide by 22 deep um, with a loft um, and insulation, which, which I know that is not the basic uh, shop. I know that... It, that I know that asking for those things does mean bells and whistles, which does drive the price up a little bit. But, um, you know, an oversized two car garage for what I'm doing right now would be, and especially if we had that loft, um, that would be sufficient space until I fill it up again, because let's just face it for as much space as I have, whatever space I have, I'm going to fill it. So whether I'm restricted to, half the basement or an entire two-car garage, you know, we'll, um, (laughs) 
we'll fill it up with 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 tools. Um, uh, Lisa, I will pull those out of the pressure pot uh, tonight. Do they have to sit for a while, or can you use them right away? So, Aluma Light's official um, guidelines will say let them sit a week, about seven days. Um, so I, I, I don't turn them right away. Um, what I'll do is I'll take that block out of the pressure pot. I will cut them up into, um, into individual pen blanks. I'll probably get five pen blanks out of that. Uh, I can cut them up right away. I just can't turn them right away because they won't, they won't polish. Right. So, um, Aluma light officially says seven days, about a week. Um, I've heard people who have, I've heard people talk about the fact that they've turned their uh, their Aluma Light pen blanks, you know, the next day or two days later, and not had any issues. So, if I can, if I'm not in a super time crunch, I let them sit if possible. Um, and the truth is, you know, most of the time, if I'm casting for somebody, um, you know, and I have to ship them. Um, if I ship the, um, the blanks, even if I cast them that day or the day before, by the time shipping is completed, um, you know, it gets to them two or three days later, they're usually ready to go, um, at that point. Um, but most of the time I've got quite a few pen blanks actually over on a rack on a, uh, a display over on the other side of this, uh, basement. That has quite a few blanks in it. Uh, Carl says his heated shop space is 32 by 24, so about the same size as my shop. That should work well. Um, Carl, without getting into any super specific numbers, um, does that mess with the uh, heating and cooling bill a ton, or is it manageable? Um, I'm just I, I'm just curious because that's one of the that's also one of the uh, not necessarily hesitations, but considerations that I'm looking at, um, because where I'm at in Ohio, we get lake effect snow, and sometimes the wind chills can get down to about you know 20 or 30 below, and it gets pretty uh, it gets pretty chilly. Um, so I'm, I'd be more worried about the winter than the summer. Although this summer, the last couple of weeks, it's been like it's been in the 90s consistently, and it's been miserable. Um, Bob, have I ever used Royal Palm? I have some, but haven't researched, uh, how to use it. Just curious if you have any experience. So unfortunately I do not have any experience with Royal Palm. Um, if I remember correctly, I believe Alan, I think his name's Alan Templeton of Mike Allen designs. Um, I'll shoot you a message on, uh, on Facebook uh, or Instagram, I believe he uh, uses. I know. I know. I'm pretty sure he has used Royal Palm quite a bit, so he would be more of an authority to talk about that. But I think uh, I think Royal Palm has that has a longer open time. Um, but I think that also means you have to leave it in the pressure pot for like eight or twelve hours or something like that. But I, I'm not entirely sure on that, but I'm pretty sure Mike Templeton would be able to, or Alan Templeton. I think it's Alan Templeton. Um, I, I'll, I'll, uh, I'm not the authority on that, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the general. Um, I'm not using my words right now, but I think that's generally how it works is that it's got a longer open time, um, but it's also got a longer pressure pot uh, requirement. So. If you, if, you know, if you only have one pressure pot and especially, I mean, if you're not, ca if you're just casting for fun, you know, it's not a big deal, but if you're trying to pump the blanks out, um, you know, cause, cause you're a production shop or, you know, you're, I know we aren't production here, but, um, you know, Royal Palm with one pressure pot might be a little tricky if you are trying to go for volume. Uh, Lisa says, fascinating. I don't know how it works. When they are done, thanks for explaining. Anytime. That's, you know, that's why we're here. You know, I learned from, you know, if I, you know, 
I learned from Bob how to turn pens first. You know, he's the reason I'm, I'm here to begin with. Um, but to get into casting, you know, I'm sure I'm going to, you know, miss some people. But, you know, I watched live streams from Brian Blom, Braxton Frankenberry, Greg Bonier, um, you know, Jason Rose. I'm sure I missed a hundred other people, but those guys who have done this longer than I have, I learned from them. So while the things that I'm doing are not new, they're not original, um, you know, if I can help, um, you know, spread the information because those guys were willing to help me, you know, I'm absolutely willing to help, uh, you know, anybody who, you know, wants to, anybody who wants to learn. Um, okay, Carl says he heats with wood. No cost since I cut wood from my wood lot. That's, that's actually, that's, that's actually a pretty good, that's not a terrible idea. Oh, Bob, you've got nothing to be sorry about. Um, I just, I, I, I've never used it. Um, I know for a while, the, the guy who was the original formulator of it, I believe it was Jason Burr, um, he had passed from, from medical complications, and there was question of whether that line of resin would continue on. And I believe that his daughters have decided to pick up the product and continue, uh, continue production with it. So I believe it's still going to be going on. Um, but Alan Templeton from Mike Allen Designs, he, I know he would be able to answer those questions for sure. But I think the general, um, the general guidelines for Royal Palm is a longer pot life, but you also have a longer open time. So, um, you know, you don't have to hurry up and get it in the pressure pot after those, you know, seven or 12 minutes or, you know, however some of those quick sets work. <laughs> oh, Bob, I mean, I'm sorry I'm getting, for getting you into turning. Uh, don't be sorry at all. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a fun hobby that just, you know, I'm able to meet a ton of awesome people. I'm able to connect with people that I would have never connected with otherwise. And, you know, I don't, I don't regret it a day in my life. Um, I probably cost you a fortune. I'm not going to argue that one, but I'm also going to say it's worth it because, you know, for, for as much as it costs, you know, the benefits, um, the benefits way outweigh anything else because, you know, in my opinion, it's probably cheaper than therapy. So, you know, you have a rough day. You come into the shop, even if you blow up a blank or two, still a better day than, you know, some alternatives. Thanks for hanging out, Carl. I really appreciate you hanging out with us tonight. Um, I'll, uh, we'll, we'll catch you around the, uh, the YouTubes and the Instagrams. Um, Todd says the cost per hour of use is pretty low. That's good because, you know, I, I know that it's going to add some cost, um, you know, the heating and cooling of the shop space. I know it does add some, um, you know, if it adds a little bit here and there, that's not terrible. But if it was going to add, you know, hundreds and thousands and millions of dollars, um, I mean, I know it's not going to be quite that much. I'm exaggerating. But if it is going to be that much, then maybe we have to, you know, rethink the idea of a detached structure. Because then we also have to run electric out there. And, and again, all of these things individually aren't terrible, uh, but they do add up. So uh, I, I do want to mention, again, uh, I, I do want to thank my patrons, Mark and Angie, um, they, they are awesome. If you guys want to get in on the Patreon app, link is in the description. Um, you know, you can choose to donate at any level. If not, that's understandable, no pressure. Um, 
I also have Amazon affiliate links. Uh, that's a that's a no extra cost way to support um, to support what I do. Um, basically, if you I was explaining earlier, if you have an Amazon order that you're going to order, you're planning on ordering whatever it is, um, you can either go to the description of one of my videos, or you can go to my website cross-cut-creations.com if you click on any of the amazon affiliate links under the tools i use tab um, it'll take you to that tool but even if you're not going to buy that tool that's fine whatever you have on your amazon list search for it put it in your cart check out and there's no extra cost to do it that way but i get a small percentage of that purchase so that's a good free way or not free but that's a good no extra cost to you way to support what I do. Um, so yeah, uh, to save money, have a climate controlled casting room in the corner. Yeah, one of the things that that, that I actually have been toying with is uh, not only would I want to um, climate control the shop, but um, you know we don't have the uh, the land to have an extra shed per se. So I would actually have three rooms. Um, one of the rooms would house all the lawn equipment and things like that. One room would be like a casting and stabilizing um, station with like an office setup type deal. And then the rest, the other, uh, the third room, if you can even call it a room, would be um, would be the open shop space. So that's where the table saw, the band saw, the sanders, all of the, the big heavy machinery would um, would be going. Um, yeah, fans and a wood stove, uh, humidifier, small heater and AC would do the job. Yeah, um, there are definitely options out there. We're just trying, right now, we're just trying to figure out how to get the uh, structure either built or placed um, you know, for less than a billion dollars, <laughs> it wasn't quite that bad, but it was, it, the, the quote we ended up with was, was higher than, uh, higher than we were hoping, but you know what, sometimes that's just how life is and, and you know, that's okay. You know, it's not the end of the world to continue working, um, you know, where I'm at. It's just, you know, we've got a lot of time. We're in, we're in absolutely no rush to, you know, to do anything. So, you know, whenever it happens, it happens. But this was a fun one tonight. Um, I really appreciate all you guys hanging out. The interaction was great. You know, these live shows are a lot of fun when there is interaction uh, with, you know, with you guys. And I just, I really enjoy it. Um, if you guys have any questions, any comments, um, we can either leave them in the chat now, or if you think of something afterwards, you know, send me an email, uh, Robert at cross dash cut dash creations.com. Uh, I check that email. Um, I check Instagram frequently. So if you want to send me a message on Instagram, I'll check that. Those are probably the two best ways to do that. Um, so yeah. It was a great show. Uh, I already said you guys uh, had great interaction tonight, and I do appreciate that because it gives me something to continue to talk about. I appreciate it. I appreciate all you guys that stop in the chat, whether it's your first time or you've been here every time. I appreciate you guys all the same. So if you guys uh, don't have anything else, we'll call it a night. Um, I appreciate you, know, you guys. Um, Lisa says, thanks for the show. Enjoyed it. Jim says, another great job. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys, for being here. Uh, thank you, Todd. Todd moderates uh, the chat, TLF Works. So if you have not subscribed to him, please go down to the uh, description of this video uh, and subscribe to his channel. I know he would appreciate it, and I would appreciate it as well. Uh, thanks, Bob, for hanging out with us. I really appreciate that. 
uh, and uh, we'll talk. I'll send you the information about Royal Palm when I get a chance. So uh, if you guys don't have anything else tonight, we'll, uh, we'll call it a night, and uh, we'll see you next week. <laughs>